Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. My name is Sofie binti Brai, metric number AP 90501. We from section 5 group 1 would like to make a presentation. Before that, I will introduce my group my groupmate Muhammad Nur Aiman bin Zahrin, Timoli Vijian, Nur Safira, Muhammad Zikri Irfan and Nur Nasrin Azma. I'm the first presenter who would like to talk about introduction leadership and supervision. Leadership are individual who are responsible for a nurturing individual in organization. When an organization makes plans with the plan by the leader, this encourages followers to increase excellence in the organization. While leadership is a process of interaction between followers and leader, the existence of leaders in the organization will have its own structure if creates a relationship between the upper, middle, and lower levels. Next, there are five key elements of leadership, which is influence, organizational objective, leaders and followers, change, and people. Next, leadership skills can be improved from time to time. The, cons the consolidation then can foster the cooperation of all parties in the organization to achieve excellence. Therefore, to achieve the goals in an organization, the leader needs to value to value an ethic where it needs to formulate and appreciate the work. In addition, it plays a role in organizational management to achieve goal on the true sense. Leadership is an element and, and spirituality a key factor that complements other factors to achieve the goal organizational excellence. That's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vigmuri Muriani. My metric number is AP19011. I'm from section 5. Today, I would like to explain about definition discussion related to leadership and supervision theories. Uh, what does mean leadership and supervision mean? From their job titles, both leaders and supervisors can develop authority or partner. Informal leader, on the other hand, can exert influence over others without holding a prominent position, motivating or inspiring people to behave in a way that benefits you, them, or, or the organization in a common definition of leadership. And for the definition for leadership and supervision are slightly different. Leadership is the basics of being competent and ready to inspire others are encapsulated in the term leader. Supervision means the activity in which supervisors monitor the productivity and success of individuals who report them directly. There are thousands of leadership theories, but today I would like to explain only three. The first one is behavioral leadership. Second one is contingency leadership. Third one is management theory. Fourth is participative theory. Fifth, relationship theory. And for the last one, for the leadership theory, is power theory. And you also can have, there are a lot of types of supervision. Today I would like to explain and introduce about only four. First one is autocratic or authoritarian supervision. Second one is Eliza's Ferry or free reign supervision. Fourth, democratic supervision. And for the last one is bureaucratic supervision these are the types of supervision that are found and that's all from me thank you assalamualaikum and hello everyone my name is Sunasin Azma binti Hanwar AP190482 I will continue with roles of top management here the organization chart for YTL corporation and for the roles of YTL corporation first the code of conduct and ethics Director must follow and adhere to the ethical standard outlined in the Company's Commission of Malaysian Court of Ethics for company directors. Second is conflict of interest. Director must identify and disclose any petition or add to a conflict of interest that may develop in connection with transaction. Lastly is dealings in the securities. Directors should be aware of their obligation not to trade in the securities of YTL Corporation. Next, we can see the organization chart of UEM Group Berhad. For the roles of UEM Group Berhad, first, review the financial statement next to ensure that they present a truthful and fair picture of the group's financial situation. Second, monitor the group business operation to see whether it is being appropriately managed. This ensure the installation of adequate risk management procedures. Lastly, examine the group's internal control system and management information system for sufficiency 
as well as system for compliance with applicable laws and guidelines. We move to WCT Holding and here the organization chart of that company for the roles of WCT Holding, first implementing WCT Group's business objective and managing the group's operation subject to the board approval, approval of appropriate authorities limits, second reviewing and approving management strategy action plans which focus on long-term value generation, lastly to oversee the group risk management system including the management of major risks affecting the group's uh, businesses and monetary key financial and non-financial rates. So, that's all for me and I will pass to the next presenter. Assalamualaikum and hi to my lecturer, Dr. Liana and my fellow friends. My name is Nur Safira Binti Johan Azhar, matric number AP190465 and I will continue my part in case study which is background organization. So, we have just three company organization which is from YTL Corporation Berhad, WTC Holding Berhad and UEM Group Berhad. YTL Corporation Berhad is one of the Malaysia's largest contractor construction company. Founded by Tan Sri Yoh Tiong Lai, an integrated infrastructure developer with branch offices at the United Kingdom, Singapore, Indonesia, Australia, Japan and China. Managing Director Tan Sri Dr. Dr. Frances Yoh Sok Ping leads YTL together with its four listed entities, which is YTL Power International Berhad, YTL Land and Development Berhad, YTL E-Solutions and YTL Hospitality REIT. This organization mainly focuses on construction contracting, cement manufacturing, property development and investment, hotel development and management, e-commerce initiative and also internet-based education solutions and services. YTL Corporation Berhad is one of the largest businesses list on the Bursa Malaysia with a combined market capitalization of around 34.3 million and a total asset of over 45 billion. WCT Holdings Berhad founded by Peter Taing Kim Hua and Wong Sewa Win. This organization was originally known as WCT Earthworks and Building Contractors way back in 1981. Now guided by its managing director, Dato Lee Tuk Fok is an investment company that invested in WCT Berhad which specializes in engineering and construction works, focusing on earthworks, construction of highways, building and related infrastructure works while providing management services. On the other hand, WCT Land focuses on property development, investment and management, mainly in residential properties development, integrated township and commercial properties. Among its projects are Spring Highway at Jalan Ma'ruf, Parat Dima, Garden City, Walls Residence, Aronia Apartments, Tripolis Apartment, Gateway at KLIA2, and Bukit Tinggi Shopping Centre. UEM Berhad is a Malaysian engineering-based infrastructure and services firm, was incorporated in 1966. UEM Group Berhad is well known for large-scale infrastructure projects. Led by Managing Director, Chief Executive Officer, Datuk Muhammad Izzadi Ghani, it has completed infrastructure, transportation and building projects in Malaysia. UEM is also known to be Malaysian largest infrastructure construction group. UEM organizational focusing on expressway, township and property development, engineering and construction, also asset and facility management. UEM also has branches in India, Indonesia, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and the Middle East. That's all from me. I will pass to the next presenter. Thank you and take care. Hello, my name is Mozgi Khamri Zadi. My message number is AP190470. So today I will pre present about advantage and disadvantage in leadership. So this one is advantage of leadership. First, we see is linked to increase in productivity. One of the advantage in leadership uh, is uh, they are able to delegate tasks efficient, efficiently, but they can also help increase strength and weakness of different employees um, and delegate work. Uh, with the, uh, the efficient division can cause get a higher result is work output. This is first and the second one is can also employees trust the manager and may be willing to work harder and stay with the company when times are tough. This is number two. Number three is the advantage of this management style and making and decision making. Um, with the great decision making for important uh, company or organization uh, are not allowed allowed to participate in decision making. Many organizations that practice this type of leadership report in short terms improvement in employee performance. As they work, it can be easily monitored thanks monitor to patriarchal leadership. <clears throat> and the last one is a uh, great influence for the organization and group activities. For advantage and for disadvantage of leadership it takes time away from performing tasks. One of the limitations of leadership you can see is that make uh, to make sure you that 
we providing employees with the resource and training they need is not productive activity so the time leading uh, instructing workers in essential to make sure that they perform their duties well that's number one and that's one is number two first a clash of personalities when we think about the pros and cons of being a leader high on the list is the facts the leader and the subordinates may not always see eyes to eyes so we can see that this agreement between manager and employee may result in dispute that waste time and reduce productivity so manager needs to have excellent excellent people skills and be able to adapt uh, the leadership styles to mess with personalities of different employees so that's all for me uh, to present about leadership uh, advantage and disadvantage of leadership thank you and good night see you again so that's all for me uh, to present about leadership uh, advantage and disadvantage of leadership thank you Hai, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Nuraiman Mezahrim No way to the AP1936 Today I'm going to present my part And I'm going to talk about supervision style of the organization Manager in this manner lead by motivating their employees Leader describe their goals and reasons behind them Persuading their teams to work together to carry out their vision Team members are inspired by their boss and then given the freedom to do their responsibility which lead to supervision. Manager will check in on a regular basis but they are confident that their common visions will keep staff on track and deliver positive outcome. Manager provide a lot of positive input to their staff both through and after the process and they leverage price of them. Okay, the next is pros and cons supervision style organization. For the pros, Staff are more engaged because they believe in what they are doing and are motivated to perform tasks to the best of their abilities. The second pros is employees are happier, motivation is higher and turnover is lower. And lastly, the level of innovation is higher and problem solving may occur fast within teams. And for the cons, firstly, not all boss are capable of truly encourage other. It is determined by the works the industry, the product, and the individual. The second is, this is not a style that can be imitated. Personnel must be motivated in order to perform successfully. When to use this style, this may be fantastic design for a digital firm aiming to disrupt the sector, NGO waiting to create innovative solutions to issues, or business with a strong sense of purpose. An organization that wishes to encourage innovation might use this approach to motivate their employees. That's all for me. Thank you. Greetings to Dr. Noliana, my name is Vijayan, my metric card number is AP190375. We have reached our final part of our presentation which is conclusion and recommendation. In conclusion, the premise underlining team effectiveness is that group of people working together methodically may accomplish more than individual working on their own. Team will not be successful unless they increase the project effectiveness and efficiency, such as by reducing conventional boundaries between team members, for example, designers and construction managers. To have maximum effective team criteria, construction companies like YTL Corporation, WCT Holding Berhad, and United Engineers Malaysia Berhad can implement these recommendations. The first one is bring all project parties to a meeting or an away day workshop devoted to the development of a shared vision, including a mission statement and formal objectives. The vision should encourage and inspire team members, dedicate them to the goal and persuade them that working together rather than individually will result in greater success. The second one is identify individual tasks and responsibilities and define a plan with deadlines, action and objectives for each team members. It is important because a team vision is frequently vaguely stated. A mission statement, on the other hand, arises from the team's vision and expresses it in clear and cohesive words. The final recommendation is keep the action plan itself under the review for continuing relevance, adequacy, and accuracy. Teams are more driven to deliver a vision that they have created since it is based on their own values, abilities, and beliefs rather than coming from the outside. That's all from me. Thank you for listening.